Welcome back. This is Dragon Loon, and we are back in Satisfactory. Uh, if you can tell, I did recently get a new mic, so if this is a good quality, please let me know if there's something that I might be able to tweak to make the audio uh, the audio quality, excuse me, uh, even better. Please comment down in the in, down below to let me know. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, been doing a little bit of work off camera. Um, I cleared out all of the buildings uh, up here where we were making our um, modular frames and uh, as well as down below where we were making the reinforced iron plates and the rotors and the space elevator part one uh, parts. Uh, I pretty much have everything uh, pulled up and put in all of these containers here. The reason that I did that is because I want to rearrange and I want to get uh, mass production set up. I want to be able to bring in all our iron and smelt it down into all uh, into iron uh, ingots and then divvy those iron ingots up into what we need to do. I did also go around and get at least one hard drive and research that and I was lucky, really really lucky, and I found the best or one of the best uh, alternate recipes in the game and that is using iron bars excuse me iron ingots to make screws so that is another thing that I want to do uh, if you look up in the right hand corner I am working on uh, getting the farming mod completely up to the Mark II farms because as you can see off in the distance we do have a little doggo and I want to start the doggo farms because they're going to be able to help us get uh, the power slugs which will be able to help us start farming power shards which we were, are eventually going to be going to need excuse me so what I want to do is I want to turn this into like our tier one production so all our iron bars, all our iron ingots, iron rods, uh, etc, etc. Uh, same with our copper and what I want to do down below if I can get down there um, is I actually want to raise this floor up just a tad bit and then we're going to turn this into our mass storage area uh, where we put all of our uh, iron plates and everything that we're making into one massive storage hub that we then ship up uh, back up above. Uh, if you think that we should do that up, up above the uh, production lines, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Uh, but for now, what we need to do is we need to take these uh, three normal nodes, which are producing right now 60 per minute, combine them with the four... Uh, impure nodes over there and there's actually two more impure nodes right around in here on the other side of that hill that I want to combine. I also want to take the um, the impure uh, limestone nodes and there's one normal limestone node that I'm using over there to uh, currently use for the farming mod because you turn uh, limestone into seeds uh, but I want to bring all of that back in here and combine it and get everything smelted down now that is going to take a lot of time uh, so this video might actually be posting uh, the following week and today at the time of these of this recording or this section anyways it is may 4th and yes i am a geek so may the fourth be with you all all right that being said let me get into this i'll bring you back once i get done all right folks so that did take me quite a bit of time uh, a couple days worth and what i did was i drew some inf inspiration from a fellow youtuber by the name of kibitz um he uh developed i guess you could say uh, a system of uh putting the 
constructors and the uh, smelters up on raised foundations that allow you to put the splitters and mergers underneath. And so that is exactly what I did here with the constructors. Now, so far I have only gotten the uh, steel plate, uh, excuse me, iron plates, the iron rods, and the screw, screw production line going because right now that is all I have the iron ingots uh, available for. So I have 12 iron uh, smelters, uh, excuse me, 12 smelters running iron ingots, and I have those split into three groups of four um, because right now we only have access to the Mark II belts which can only process 120 items per minute. So I have those split into four uh, or excuse me three groups of four. Now the really great thing is that the um, recipes that I'm using I they they work out to where each group of four can run one production line. So I have four constructors here making iron plates because each constructor takes 30 iron ingots per minute and that's what one smelter uh, produces. So I have, let's see, they are, tw they produce 20 iron plates per minute, 20 times four. So I have 80 iron plates per minute currently being produced. And then if we go over here, to the other side, I have eight constructors here, each set to produce uh, iron bars because one constructor uses 15 iron ingots per minute and produces 15 iron bars per minute. So that is, and let me pull out a mod that I have, which is a calculator, which you can use on screen. So if we do 15, times eight, that is 120 iron bars per minute. And I should have been able to do that in my head. I feel stupid now. All right, so moving on. Uh, over here, I have 10 constructors set up. These are using the alternate recipe uh, that makes, uh, or that uses iron, uh, iron ingots to make screws. Now, if we plop down a constructor here, and we pull up that recipe, each one is actually producing 50 uh, screws per minute. Now, again, if we pull up our calculator here, uh, I don't even have to do that. That is 500 screws per minute. So unfortunately, in order to have uh, the screw, uh, the, the constructors not get backed up, I would actually need to split this into roughly uh, three lines, I believe, uh, because again, we can only handle 120 parts per minute. But that's fine. Um, it actually facilitates the overflow method, which I uh, personally prefer using a lot better because it allows all of the machines to back up. And then, you know, I can just use the the um, screws as need be. And I believe, yeah, if you look here, these constructors here aren't processing anymore because they're completely full because we, we just were not able to process that many um, screws per minute uh, on our belts. Uh, eventually we will upgrade those to be able to process that many. Uh, I might even go back later and split those into a few uh, separate lines. But let me show you what's going on downstairs because I have the outputs for all of those going down to the next floor below which, as I said earlier, is going to be our mass storage. So for right now, I have two um, two regular storage containers per item set up. Uh, the items are flown into the top container, and then with the uh, help of a conveyor elevator, they're flown down below. Uh, and that way, we'll have uh, two full containers uh, set up by the time everything's done. Now I did also download a different mod which allows you 
to uh, have uh, it's called the floor hole mod it allows uh, these conveyor elevator looking things to go down through the foundations I wasn't too happy with these but one thing that it does have are these ceiling conveyor poles which is what I'm using here and right here it's really nice it keeps the conveyors up along the ceiling unfortunately you cannot stack those uh, not sure if the mod developer uh, is eventually going to allow you to stack the conveyor bowls if he's watching this I hope he does but yeah we'll just have to see so for right now we have our screws being produced we have our iron rods being produced and we have our iron plates being produced uh, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to set up our copper lines so that we can get the copper wire and the cable uh, and the copper sheets productions uh, set back up and what I'm going uh, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, utilize the same method where I just set up all of the constructors in one giant line uh, that way as we get uh, the higher tier conveyor belts uh, we can we can just add to the lines and be able to hand uh, expand it as need be uh, so once again give me a little bit because this is going to take a while but we're gonna set those up here uh, and I think I might even be able to add in a second copper line other than just this one but I'll have to take a look uh, give me just a moment all right everyone so i have a little bit more work done on my production chains um the last cut was our iron production here uh right in front of us this time i have all of our copper production set up a uh, little bit more uh, work done on putting the resource sink back in and starting to get our tier 2 slash tier 3 uh, production chain set up so let me take you through what i've gotten done so far uh, over here again through all of our iron if i can get through this maze of conveyor belts uh so i have four uh, excuse me three constructors over here making our uh if i remember right this is wire no this is our copper sheet okay so i have three constructors making our copper sheets and four constructors making our copper wire and i just realized i forgot to include our cable production so i will have to add that next time but uh, I split it down like that because I only have two uh, normal nodes coming in here and again we're going to have to get uh, mark 3 uh, conveyor belts to truly make this completely efficient but right now they are going into four uh, smelters for smelters makes 120 copper ingots per minute and break that down between copper wire and copper sheets and that comes out to three constructors for copper sheets and four constructors for copper wire again i did make this modular so we can uh, go in and remove this uh, conveyor lift here and add more constructors and everything as we get faster belt speeds um, i then uh, added in a bunch more foundations here and put it in our um space elevator again but i put it down on the same floor as our uh storage area and i aimed it to where we have the a uh, couple of the inputs right here so we can just throw the belts down uh the other thing that i did was i added in the resource sink and i split off the outputs for all of our storage containers and merged them into one uh, because I needed a couple more of the uh, tickets that you get from the resource sink and I figured the best way because I wasn't actively using all of this was to just split it off merge it together and throw it in a resource sink so I have all of that going um, I then used some of those tickets to get some 
uh, new foundations, sloped foundations, as well as these conveyor walls, because um, borrowing the idea from Kibitz, I am using a resource spine to bring all of our resources up to the next uh, second floor up there for the second tier of production, as well as bringing them down this way eventually to be able to throw them into more storage bins because, of course, this is our storage area. So let's, let me take you upstairs to show you what I have on the second floor. All right, so up here, so far, all I've gotten going is our iron plate production. Um, I had to leave off there because I know that this uh, video is going to be getting awfully long if I continue. But um, I also needed to get this production up and going as soon as possible because I'm running out of iron plates with all the Mark II belts that I've been producing. So, right now we only have a bunch of Mark I belts uh, bringing the resources in, as you can see right there. Uh, but as we get more uh, iron plate, and reinforced iron plate, excuse me, uh, I will be upgrading those to our Mark IIs just so that we can increase the production speed. Uh, so, I did throw down four assemblers for the iron plates because if I remember right that's what we need to be able to start producing things like motor uh, excuse me the uh, uh, modular frames as well as the tier one uh, space elevator parts which we want to automate the production of that as well as well as having a little bit of leftover for us to be able to use the reinforced iron plates in other things such as the mark II belts so, for right now, we only have four. Uh, again, this video is probably going to be getting a little long um, because I've had to do these recordings over the space of about a week because of uh, things going on in my other works, um, as YouTube is not my only job right now, although I hope to one day dedicate more time to this. So, ah. Uh, that being said, uh, I think we'll call it a day for here. Uh, if you enjoyed this video of me deconstructing my base and reconstructing it into bigger automation, please leave me a like. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe as it will help me improve the videos and the quality, knowing that more and more people like my videos. As always, stay frosty out there.